Well, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule um, to answer our, answer my questions. I know you've done a few interviews for the new album and kind of late in the game here. <laughs> yeah, but no problem. I mean, um, and it's also a nice thing that we are doing a lot of interviews because that means that there is a lot of interest in the album. And um, I like that, of course, because... Um, it's quite a great feeling when you you know you sit at home and and, and write some songs and a few years later um, a lot of people already uh, all of a sudden want to know what what it's about so it's quite a good feeling <laughs> awesome. to get this kind of attention. Well, how how is uh, is Germany right now? Is it or are you in Germany right now? I should yeah, ask. yeah, I'm in Germany. I'm at home in Bavaria, and um, as it seems from this day midnight on, there is no other choice than being at home anymore because I think um, it's just the news that they're basically locking down um, that state. So we are only allowed to go out to do groceries or go to a pharmacy, and um, that's about it. So. It's quite, it's quite super surreal and weird. My my personal problem is that I've been <clears throat> that I've been sick recently, so I haven't mm-hmm. been out or almost almost had no um, social interaction at all except for my nephew who co- who came two times bringing me groceries. So that was my life for the last two or three weeks. Now I'm basically recovered or like I'm still having a little bit of a cold, and now there's this whole quarantine and lockdown. So I'm not gonna meet any 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 other human beings for like five or six weeks weeks or something so i think that, that really fucks you up in your head to be just honest just a little bit yeah 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 I mean, we're we're in the same situation out here but uh you know facetiming it it helps i i did mm-hmm. that yesterday when i was building a playlist yeah i mean for for me in in a way um like at least when it comes to the job situation it's not even that bad like compared to a lot of other people or friends or people that work in i mean almost there are so many people, especially freelancers, that have zero income now for several weeks or something, and nobody even knows how they are gonna survive. And you know, I'm 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 basically having my studio at home, and I'm doing a lot of mixing, so I'm just shifting my schedules around a little bit. And I just thought, like, well, I can I can still keep myself busy for the next five or six weeks easily because I have like five albums in the pipeline that I can mix now. So I'm just gonna do that. So at least for me, um, it's not not even that bad as for for many. Other other people um so i'm still in a lucky situation i guess so prior to the album drop at at the end of february for specters from the old world Mm -hmm. uh you guys had released a few tracks uh from the album uh, yes include spider in the web and uh pulling at threads and um what has the fan reaction been with the new material from those releases and the music videos (sighs) <clears throat> I think the fan reaction has been very, very good, especially to putting at threats, I think, um, because I also think it's really an awesome song, if I can say that about our own songs. But I think the, the reaction to especially that song has been very, very good. But I mean, it's also uh, putting at threats is also a perfect single, so to say, because it's a very short song. It's very compact, but nevertheless, it kind of features everything. It's very aggressive, uh, melodic at the same time, so it was a very good choice. And I think Isa, the next song that we put out, um, was a very nice contrast and kind of showed the other opposite of the of the palette of the of the album, which mm-hmm. because Isa was kind of the, the longest and most epic song. I also think that the reaction to that song have been really good. Um, I have the feeling, to be honest, that the reactions to the actual video track, Pali Aike, they were a mm-hmm. bit mixed. When when we released that album there, uh, or when we released um, that song, I was honestly a bit disappointed. And I have the feeling that a lot of people didn't really get what the video is about. Because like, oh, why the fuck is a black metal band standing in a desert? And are you guys singing about how beautiful Arizona is? Ha ha ha. No, actually, we're singing about how beautiful Paliaike is. That's what the video is about. And that's what the video simply shows. But most people probably just, just don't know that just don't know that Paliaike is an actual place. It's that yeah. uh, national park in the in the very south of Chile, and so it's a volcanic uh, area. And all these nature shots that you see in the video, they are taken exactly from that very place. So, I mean, I, I know the video is quite simple, but it makes sense to make a video about when a song is about a certain place, you just show that place and you show the band in a similar environment. So that was the whole um, thinking um, behind it. And I think a lot of people didn't really understand it. But well, it is as it is. And 
Um, I think there's beauty and simplicity, much like nature. So I, I think, yeah. it, you know, I, I watched it. I wasn't confused by it, but okay. I also Google a lot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think most people uh, don't. I'm, and especially the thing is also when you when we release um, like these these pre-releases, the singles that we've released as first thing, then it's basically our it's aiming at our fans like people mm -hmm. that are interested in dark fortress anyways they are watching this when we put out an official um video it's a different thing i think a lot of people that have nothing to that have never heard about us or also that are not really into black metal or anything um they get to see this video probably also because they're just subscribed to to century media channel Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, there are a lot of people bitching about it, but also other. Uh, I've also heard a lot of comments from people like, "Hey, it's the first time I'm 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 actually hearing this band, and I really love it." So um, it serves the purpose. But, um, anyways, I mean, we are we are not uh, filmmakers. <laughs> it's it's uh, in the first place, it's about the music and. Um, Overall, I'm very, very uh, happy with the reactions we've we've received for the album. We've got amazing reviews, and um, especially in Germany, it's the first time that we actually made it to the to the official album charts on, on number 39, which has never be happened before, exactly. and which is uh, quite crazy. But I think it's probably just due to the fact that nobody, um, except for metal fans and and Schlager fans. Are still buying records. I don't think we sold more records than uh, than with the albums okay. before. It's just like our genre is still, you know, in our genre, people still buy records in in the mainstream genres. The record sales, the physical sales, just drop to nowhere, and that's why all of a sudden all these obscure metal bands uh, are in the charts in Germany. I love it. Uh, metal is is going to thrive again just from that. We're going to make the charts, and then people are going to get curious. Uh, yeah, I mean, just like, um, I don't know, I think the new Body Count album just made it on number four in Germany, I think, or three, which is also quite amazing. <laughs> body Count made it to number three in Germany, that's I awesome. I think four, I think four, but uh, still, I mean, it's top five. <laughs> yeah. So what sets this album apart from your other bodies of work that you've released in the past? Um, I don't really think that it necessarily sets itself apart so much because it's an it's another Dark Fortress album and there's always like some common ground between every uh, Dark Fortress album and I think like we we always have like uh, three main aspects on on every album and for me that's the the aggressive and heavy aspect then there's always like a certain melancholic aspect to our music and also this really dark atmospheric aspects and i think uh you find that on every album that we've made it's just like um that the emphasis is is different on these aspects on every album and i think um well our two previous albums Islam and venereal dawn they probably were a bit more proggy Mm -hmm. and less compact just longer songs more more epic in a way and i really felt the need and the necessity to to make a shorter and a heavier and aggressive more aggressive album again because yeah it's just um it, the 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 two albums before at some at some point when you always make albums that are like so overly long and 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 complex um it's also s kind of exhausting i have to say and um that's why i really felt the need to make a way more compact and kind of simple album this time um even though people don't really consider it as very simple i think but um it's just more to the point this time i think mm -hmm. awesome um was there an aha moment that inspired the writing for this album yeah, uh, to be honest, I think it was when I when I had the first uh, parts for the for the opening track, basically. So Nascence and Coalescence, it's the first two titles, but it's for me, it's one song. We just in the end, I decided, or we decided it would be better to split it into two tracks. But this was the first song that was written, and that was very that that song just happened. Um, it was very spontaneous. I think I just I just just playing guitar and trying out some sounds, and I had my uh, I had my recording system running and i just started improvising and all of a sudden these riffs just came out and it was like um, being struck by thunder or something and and being completely high on adrenaline and um 
this kind of set the tone and the mood for the whole album for me because um, after I had this song and it happened in such a short time, I was really inspired. And then the next song, they just came uh, in a way quite naturally and always, like I, I always um, try to write um, um, considering the the context of the album. So very often I had one song finished and the end of that song was the inspiration for the next song. So you you hear okay the first song it it's it ends really fast and with a lot of blast beats and it's very aggressive so as next thing i maybe want to hear some mid tempo groovy stuff and then um started writing something and so every time like the the previous song was kind of the starting point for the next song so i had this uh quite natural flow over a few months where like the like two thirds of the album or three quarters almost of the album were were written wow as, it's nice to to hear that that a chain reaction occurred where just one thing flew into another. Um, yeah, it's good to I, have a fluid writing process. The, absolutely, and I have to say, I didn't have that in a long time. I think the last time I really had it like this, or we had it like this, was when we were writing Seance, which is already like uh, many years ago. And uh, the all the the other albums were were harder to write. I have to say, and. This one was um, coming easier. Maybe, maybe um, that's also its strength that it just comes from a very natural uh, inspiration. Probably. Was there a particular theme or message you were trying to emanate through the music of this particular album? Um, not necessarily. The thing is also, of course, um, when 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 we are writing music or when I write music, there is always a certain feeling underneath that I want to express, but it's very it's often very, very vague and difficult um, to to find words for it, and that's why I prefer to to express these feelings in music, um, because it's it's hard to put it into terms or into words. But I think um, there's there's one certain picture that I that I have in my mind very often when I write music that I that I somehow wanted to express, <coughs> and it's um, just imagine you are in the Arctic or Antarctic on the on the eternal ice on a glacier and it's a uh, total polar night and above you is the is the sky or the firmament um, like throning like a dome uh, on top of you and the the stars are shining it's a, in a way a very romantic picture but it's also like the idea of being in an environment that is completely ice cold and dark and hostile and at the same time beautiful and has this kind of um heavenly or or or, or sacred vibe to it and I've, I've i i spend i try to spend um every year some time in in kind of untouched nature and go to to extreme high mountains or something and and walk over glaciers and that this kind of uh experience with nature that is basically untouched by by mankind that gives me a certain vibe and i think I'm always looking for expressing these kind of emotions or that vibe that I feel when I'm in these places. I try to to express this with the music. But it's, of course, a very vague thing. But um, I can still... Um, I, I get these kind of feelings um, when I hear our songs. And that's also maybe one of the reasons why why I love that cover and that artwork so much this time. Because it's the first time that... I have the feeling that um, the songs are really the music is getting really perfectly represented by the by the cover and by the artwork this time. <laughs> so far, always the artworks have been like totally connected to the lyrics, but mm-hmm. only to the lyrics. And this time, I can make the perfect connection between the lyrics and also the original emotions that I had when when I was writing the music. Right on. So that um, was a long previous... answer. I'm very sorry, but I oh, hope no, I'm you're fine. Uh, this actually sure. ties into my next question. So, okay. in a in a previous interview, you had mentioned that you you really enjoy exploring nature, and obviously, you just touched on that a little bit more. Um, but was there like a, a like you you did mention you know a polar ice cap or a glacier? But mm-hmm. was there a particular trail, cavern, or natural wonder that you've explored yourselves at, either as an individual or as a band? That came to mind while you're writing any particular song. Um, 
I would say, like for for me, it's personally that I that I did did some uh, specific trips in the in the Alps. Like uh, for example, I I went on Mont Blanc and, and and stuff like that, and did some other glacier trips. But um, our vocalist uh, Morian, he made uh, himself a very long trip uh, in early 2015. That was like basically just when we were starting to work on that album. That he was for three months in Chile. And traveled through the whole country from from north to south, and even went to the Antarctic. And I think um, that was also very very inspirational for him. And then um, our singer and our new keyboarder Phoenix and me, we also made a trip a couple of years ago to Spitzbergen in January. Spitzbergen, also the other name is Svalbard. It's uh, that that island that somehow still belongs to Norway, but it's it's. Uh, very, very far north. It's um, there's one little town on that island called um, Longyearbyen, and it's on the seven seven eighth um, degree northern whatever. I don't know the English word. Sorry, but it's like the most no- northern um, town in the world, and that was also totally mind blowing being there in January and just um, yeah doing some trips over the ice and still see these kind of uh, places while they are there. So I think these were really um, inspiring um, things. But on the other hand, you know, sometimes you just sit there, you have a guitar in your hands and you play and and things come. But um, yeah, (laughs) next question. (laughs) Uh, So... There, there were plans to cross the pond uh, to play at Maryland Death Fest and California yeah. Death Fest in May of June of this year. Yeah. Currently, they're still still saying they're going strong and haven't canceled due to the COVID-19 travel restrictions. Well, uh, um, I don't know if it's official yet, but I, I, I got an email today from Evan from Maryland Death Fest. They're going to postpone Maryland Death Fest to 2021. So Maryland Death Fest is not going to happen in 2020. They just decided it today, I think. So, yeah. But uh, I'll they all. Until they make an official announcement. <laughs> they will probably make an official announcement today or tomorrow, but um, they are, they've already contacted the bands. And it's mm-hmm. probably inevitable, um, but they already ask us if we want to play in 2021, and we will 99% sure we will do it. And with oh. California Death Fest, they don't know yet, but quite honestly, my hopes aren't that high that it's going to happen this year. Because, I mean, at the moment, you cannot really plan anything. At, as far yeah. as I know, at the moment, Europeans aren't even allowed to travel to the United States. And it's probably mm-hmm. also the other way around now. I mean, like we we aren't even allowed to to, to leave the house at the moment. Yeah. So um, I don't I don't know if it's happening in 2020. To be honest, um, if as long as it happens, maybe in 2021, then it's not lost. It's just postponed. And I mean, we are we also have been uh, basically booking a whole West Coast tour, which is not official yet, but that's. That was also in the making, and I, I really just hope it's going to happen. What Was that going to be planned for later on in the year? Uh, it was planned for um, when, when we play California Death Fest to make a little West Coast tour around that. So it would have happened end of June, beginning of July. But let's see about that. I mean, one, one aspect you also have to consider is that... Um, that the Maryland Death Fest um, promoters, who are obviously also doing the California Death Fest, they they of course have to pay for our visas, mm-hmm. and that is quite expensive. So the whole idea was they pay for the visas once, and we do two trips. Now, yeah. um, since we're obviously not doing Maryland Death Fest, they would maybe have to get visas for us for California Death Fest and next year again. I don't even know if that makes sense on a financial level. So yeah. I kind of assume that things will be postponed to 2021, but we don't know yet about California Death Fest. But Maryland Death Fest is not happening, is not happening this year. Were there any bands on the bill that you were particularly looking forward to seeing again or even for the first time uh, while you guys are playing festivals? Mm, I think Dismember were supposed to play, right? I, I believe so. I believe so, yeah. I, would, I, would, I wouldn't mind seeing Dismember. I've been a fan when I was a kid and it would be interesting to see those guys. And 
Um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the whole tour that was supposed to take place would have been together with Nagelfar from Sweden. And I also always liked that band a lot. So that would also be cool to be with them, to be honest. Those guys are great. Yeah. Awesome. Like on the, on my yeah. very first show that we did with Dark Fortress, when uh, when when we basically had this new lineup uh, that was I think in summer two thousand one, if I remember correctly, we even played a cover song from uh, the Nagelfar debut album at that time. But that's long ago, <laughs> almost twenty years. Oh wow, yeah, that's that's a while ago. Uh, mm. Well, I know that the festivals aren't happening, but hopefully, uh, you know, they'll the same bands will still be able to play next year. I hope uh, so too, yeah. And do you have any um, words of wisdom for other musicians out there who are just getting their feet wet in the scene or maybe have been around for a few years but haven't really expanded um, past a certain point yet? Words of wisdom, oh God. Um, maybe I'm the wrong guy for that because like, um, <laughs> I'm not necessarily standing for music that is commercially very successful <laughs> but maybe that's also the thing um that you don't have to try to be successful i think it's it's more about just doing what really comes out of yourself and not trying to fulfill um certain expectations because only if you do something genuine i think um that's the best way to go always and just um, follow your, your your guts and your your true inner self, and and stay stay true to that. I think that would be the best advice. Would you ever come play Las Vegas? Uh, have you, if you had the opportunity, um, right venue, right promoter, um, as maybe part of the West Coast tour when it when it rolls out. I mean, if there is a if there is a promoter interested, of course I would uh, like to play there. Actually, I've been to Las Vegas twice, and I've uh, personally I've played one time in Las Vegas in 2007, I think. And it was like uh, back then I was uh, I was live sessionist uh, in Celtic Frost, and we were there with uh, on a tour type of negative in Celtic Frost, and that was super amazing. And yeah, we played in Las Vegas and. <laughs> crazy place <laughs> it is a crazy place it's actually uh shut down right now which has never happened so yeah. the strip is, is empty um and we're we're kind of in the same shelter in place type of situation as well yeah. so we're, we're being asked to stay home and yeah. only venture out i can't needed. imagine that 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 a place less, like las vegas that is always so full all of a sudden if there are no people at all it must be quite spooky in a way. It's very eerie, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I came back from a trip to San Francisco for, for my day gig, and uh, mm-hmm. the airports were practically empty. My flight was practically empty. I got I got upgraded to first class for like 11 yeah. bucks. Um, yeah, nice. So I got to have some extra leg room for an hour flight. Uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's been very interesting um, mm-hmm. to see. Uh, how it's kind of adjusted you you know that you're in a desert now um yeah the strip has gone dark for the first time in a while crazy i mean hey in in las vegas isn't there also that that uh festival psycho las vegas yes what's what's it called yeah because um yeah i've heard about the festival of course but i've never been there but that would also be something interesting so it's a pretty big festival i think it's about what three days uh mm-hmm. and it, i think they're hosting at mandalay bay they mm-hmm. haven't announced uh anything that i've seen recently in regards to whether or not they're postponing anything i know that mm-hmm. they have a lot of european bands on the bill this year mm-hmm. um particularly in the black metal realm so mm-hmm. you know it might be behoove them to kind of look into what their options are i'm hoping Thing, it still happens i think the the city needs it and i think the bands need it um yeah yeah in general so if we can have at least one festival uh that would be great we also have a death fest coming up in in june as well um in las vegas 20 20th and 21st yeah in las vegas ah okay i didn't know that so it's one week before california death fest yes right? yeah. Yeah, yeah okay yeah. What is the strangest thing you have ever found or had thrown on stage? Thrown on stage? Huh. I don't really think that something particularly strange has ever happened. To be honest, I'm not really sure. 
You've never <laughs> shared a like, stage with one No, Tang? nobody. I don't <laughs> think that anybody has ever thrown a, a bra or a slip or something like that on stage. But we are probably also not the band for that. I mean, we are not Mert- Mertley crew. <laughs> <laughs> like Have you um had any like weird props from other bands that just kind of were left there um no because usually all the bands clean their shit even if they use real blood or anything um very respectful hmm? very yeah. respectful no but i mean that's that's how that's how it goes i mean usually when you are in a usually there's a stage manager making sure that um <laughs> the stuff from the previous band is off stage so i mean ha huh. I would have to think about that a bit more, but I can't really come up with uh, with a with a very interesting or clever answer. Um, no, not that I that I really uh, remember. The only thing that that I remember is that um, I've once <laughs> that we, when we when 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 we had this tour with uh, that Celtic Frost type of negative tour on the last uh, show, um, type of negative were throwing toilet paper from the stage into the into the audience, and like some of us also joined them, so it was just this stupid um, throwing around of toilet paper from the stage. But that oh, uh, that would just trigger people. <laughs> Don't throw toilet paper. Don't waste it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, nowadays, that would be a very, very expensive gimmick to do. <laughs> People would be fighting over it in the mosh pit. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They wouldn't throw it back on stage. They would just keep it nowadays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Knowing how black metal fans roll, what is the most brutal mosh pit, now that now we mentioned mosh pits, that you have seen at one of your shows in, like, the last year? The thing is, with black metal concerts, people don't make really brutal mosh pits, at least not in Europe. Um, The typical black metal crowd, especially in Germany, is that people are standing there with their arms um, um, right in front of their chest and with a grumpy face and and aren't really moving that much. (laughs) So that that is kind of more the thing. No no in-sync headbanging? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that that yes. But um, brutal mosh pits... um, (laughs) Not so we much. Get them to be out here, okay. 1349 came out and played a, a, a small little dive bar type uh, mm-hmm. venue. And uh, the, like the mosh pit was nonstop their whole set. Cool. I mean, I, I remember one day when, when we were on tour with Tripticon in the United States together with 1349, we had a show in a small club. And actually, Frost, the drummer from 1349, was standing in the first row and was banging his head so hard. He really banged his head literally against the stage, so he was bleeding. And that was really fucking impressive. Um, So maybe the most brutal moshing I've ever seen was actually Frost from Satyricon in 1349. And I really respect him for that. (laughs) And for a lot of other things. Was that before or after he played? Uh, I think that was after they played, because okay. before uh, they play, I him. think he has this very long, strict warm-up uh, routine that he's doing before a show. So before mm-hmm. a show, I think he's so much in his own world and just uh, busy with warming himself up. And he's extremely professional also when it comes to this. So it, I'm sure it was after they have played. Well, that's fair. Definitely the, the level of professionalism. I think it would have been great to just see him do that and then and then be playing a full set right after that that also would have been epic <laughs> uh, yeah yeah but i think it was cool the, i think it was the other somewhere. way around yeah <laughs> all right well that's all the questions i had for you uh is there anything else you wanted to talk about closing words shout outs endorsements social media um, plugs <laughs> <laughs> no, not 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 necessarily. I think we've we've um, the the one thing that was really important for me to address is that whole situation now that we don't know if we can actually play in the United States um, in 2020, and that we are really really hoping that it will still happen or that we can come over in 2021 because you know we've never been to the U.S. with Dark Fortress and it's uh, it would be a dream coming true and. I hope uh, I hope we will. It's only postponed and not cancelled for good. Me too. Yeah, I would really like to to see you guys play at cool. either fest. Um, you know, and if not, I'll catch you guys in twenty twenty one. Perfect. Okay. Cool. <laughs>
Well, thank you so much again for taking the time and uh, really appreciate it. New album is killer and I, I will be posting a review in the next couple of weeks. Okay, cool. Thank you very all much. All the other ones you received. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Have okay. You too. Bye-bye.